How can I be born as old as I am? How can I be, can I enter my mother's womb and be born again? Now, Nicodemus is a spiritual man. Jesus does not speak at a layman's language. He's, a, now in, he's addressing a spiritual man. There's no way Nicodemus, uh, Jesus could speak to Nicodemus like he was speaking to these who were sinners. Because Nicodemus is a spiritual man, Jesus must go at the level of Nicodemus. But still at his level, Nicodemus fails to understand spiritual things. He's supposed to understand spiritual things, but he's blank. How can a man as old as I am be born again? Before Jesus simplifies it for him, he looks at this holy man. Who is supposed to understand the heavenly things? Now, there's one church I was preaching during Corona time, Pastor, last year. Yeah, it's in Midlands, somewhere in Midlands, east here. When I reached the gate of the church, I was wearing a mask. We were told to go with masks to show example. So when I entered the gate, the first leader followed me and said, Ah, here where you have come. If you wear a mask, ah, there will be problems. They don't believe in a mask. They are saying if you wear a mask, it's the mark of the beast. I said, is this an SDA church? They said, yes. Spiritual things are spiritual descent. You can only understand spiritual things when you are led by the spirit of God. I said, okay. So we went out. I removed the mask. Before I preached, I put it deliberately there. And I told the church, I said, oh, I'm wearing a mask because I don't know whether my neighbor has a flu. Mm. It's not about corona, it's about a flu. But before corona came, we used to wear a mask because of dust. Eh? So is it a mark of the beast? So mama, if you go to those churches, you are putting mask, mark of the beast. And that's how shallow we can be as SDAs, as if we don't read. We are people of the book. The mark of the beast, you and me must know by now that it is worshipping of the beast, Sunday worship. It's the mark of the beast in short, not the mask and whatever. Now, Nicodemus fails to understand spiritual things because he's not spirit descent. So Jesus tells Nicodemus in short words that you, Nicodemus, you must be born of the water and the spirit. That's when you will enter the kingdom of heaven. As long as you are born of water alone, without the spirit of God, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Let me address you, Charleston Church. If we are going to change the world, we must be born of the water and the spirit. Being born of water alone is not enough. We need also the spirit to be water and the spirit combined. Then that is a full baptism. As long as there's no spirit, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. Jesus addresses Nicodemus. Nicodemus, you are a leader of these men. But you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, who was Nicodemus? Briefly, let's talk about him. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. A leader of Pharisees. Now, you can't be a Pharisee if you are not a Jew. You can't be a Pharisee, if you are not a real Jew. Real Jews were circumcised. It dates back from Genesis. When God called Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. And when Abraham followed God, in chapter 17 verse 10 now, God tells Abraham that you and me must make a covenant, an agreement. Your descendants, you must be circumcised and your descendants. When you are circumcised, it means I am your God and you are my people with your descendants. And they were heirs of the kingdom of heaven. This is how circumcision started. For you to be a Jew, 
You must be circumcised. No wonder even in the times of when Jesus left, there were issues with circumcision. You can't be a Pharisee when you are not a Jew and you are not circumcised. Those that were circumcised were heirs of the kingdom of heaven. What were some of the traditions and cultures of Pharisees? A Pharisee would not stand in public with somebody's wife. Avoiding appearance of evil. <laughs> but some of us, we even text people's wives. Midnight, someone's wife. Or somebody's husband. We text them in the night. A Pharisee would not stand in public with somebody's wife. A Pharisee on the Sabbath, they would measure a distance. If you walk more than that distance they have measured, you are breaking the Sabbath. At least you are driving. Where I come from, they walk long distances. If you are sweating, you are breaking the Sabbath. As far as Pharisees are concerned. Pharisees, if they see a swine passing here, a Pharisee, a swine is a pig. For those who don't know, a swine is a pig, eh? Pig. If a pig is passing here, a Pharisee will not pass there. Because in Leviticus, God told them not to eat or touch the carcass of a swine. And those are some of the questions that pastor we asked during uh, stewardship. Can a Christian keep swine? You know the answer. Don't ask such questions. Leave them for those who are not yet baptized. A Pharisee will not pass where a swine passes. Can I bring it home? But you and me, we don't eat swine at Chelston. But when it comes in the form of Hungarian, it no longer becomes swine. Are we home, Chaston? Are we together, church? Yeah, when it comes in the form of beef polon, it no longer becomes swine. When it comes in the form of chicken polon. But why can't it just be chicken? Why should the eat have a surname of polon? Am I talking to someone this morning? Am I talking to someone this morning? One day we left church with one of my friends, the elder. As he was giving me transport, we went into Melissa. So I said, ah, Pastor, I want to buy bread. I said, no problem, I'll wait for you. So let's go in. We went in. So as he was getting bread, he said, can I get for you, Pastor? I said, Ubomba Mwibaladi Mwibala, get for me. So he got for me. So we went, he said, now, before we go, there's a place I love where there's meat. Yeah, we went there. So he got pour on, beef pour on. Said, I like, I love these things. I put pa, pa bread on the middle. He says, can I get for you, pastor? I said, I used to eat these when I was converted, before I was converted. Now we have none. We don't eat. No, this is just a beef pour on. I said, for you, it's okay, not for me. We used to eat these things those days before we knew Christ. Now we know we will not eat. So for you, who are not yet there, eat. For us, who, are, who know what it means to come out of darkness into his marvelous life, leave us. To, if we are villagers, we don't eat polon, leave us. We eat the chicken without a surname. You eat the polon with a surname, chicken polo, polon. It's for you, not for us, who have reached, who have been removed from darkness into his marvelous light. Now, the Pharisee will not pass where a swine passes. Some of the tradition of these Pharisees, if a Pharisee looks at a woman lustfully, and they go home and they audit the day, and they discover that they had looked at a woman lustfully, Pharisees had baptism pools. They would baptize themselves, dying daily. Do you die daily in prayer? They will die daily. Now the Bible says, this is a man 
who comes to Jesus at night. And still Jesus tells him that you, Nicodemus, you are not converted. You must be born again. When you are born again, you will see the kingdom of heaven. As long as you are not born again, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. When you look at the background of Nicodemus, you will be shocked that Nicodemus' background is loaded. Now, we pick you, who is a vegetarian there. We bring you here. We get all of you vegetarians, we bring you here. We get Nicodemus, we put him here. You'll be shocked that he beats you in all points. We get all the elders from Charleston men. We put them here. We get Nicodemus, we put him here. You'll be shocked that your elders are beaten by Nicodemus. We get the one who's preaching this morning, me. You put me here. You bring Nicodemus, you put him here. You'll be sure that Nicodemus beats me in all points. We get all the master guards from Charleston men here. We put them here combined. We get Nicodemus, we put him here. You'll be sure he beats them all. We get the Dorcas mothers with their royalty and purity. We put them here from Charleston. We get Nicodemus, we put him here. You'll be sure that he beats them in all points. But he comes to Jesus at night and he's told you, Nicodemus, there's something wrong with your religion. As long as you're not born again, you'll not see the kingdom of heaven. Let me put it this way. We get all of you, the pastor, the district pastor in the front, me, the, the, host, the, the guest pastor following him, all of you are following us, combine. We get Nicodemus here. You'll be sure he beats us in all points. But he comes to Jesus by night. And Jesus tells him, as long as your religion, there's something wrong with your religion. As long as you are not born again, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. Many of us sit that here, sorry to say, when we were getting baptized, it was just a mere bath. A mere bath. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now how do we change the world when we took a mere bath? People that took a mere bath, they will say, I hate that one naturally. You took a bath. Some of you don't talk to each other within here. <laughs> you took a bath. You took a bath, yes. At, you, know, Sabbath, you took a bath. You don't talk to a brother within Charleston, man. <gasps> you took a bath. Some of us who took a bath, we don't care whether it's church. We wear things that are not even decent. Short skates in uniform sometimes. Master get uniform. Mini skate as if, as if there's shortage of material in Zambia. You took a bath. Because when you have the Holy Spirit speaking to you, it will tell you how to dress. Are you moving with me? It will tell you how to do what? To dress. Today we see men wearing small things are tight everywhere. The trousers are tight and it ends somewhere here as if it's a Bermuda. And they come in our uniforms and they come here. Everything is tight. Body suits are for women. A child of God with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will tell you how to dress modesty. Because the Holy Spirit will guide you in all truth. Those who took a bath, they don't know how to speak to each other. They speak anything. The one who has been born of the water and the spirit, as they speak to their fellow sinners, they'll speak with them with the grace. Words that will build them. Why? Because even them, the Holy Spirit is helping them. But those that speak carelessly, they took a bath. Those who took a bath, some of you, you came at 10 hours at church, you took a bath. Those are signs of a bathing person. At work, you go at 6, you're in a rush. At church, you walk without agency. Yeah, Jesus is your cousin. You're coming. You took a bath. If you came at 10 hours, sorry, you took a bath. There's no way about it. When you are moved by the Spirit of God, when the Spirit of God is in you, 
David said, I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. He was glad. We are supposed to be glad when it's Sabbath time to rush to church because the Holy Spirit is troubling us to go and meet Jesus. Hallelujah, church. But because we took a bath, we don't bother. It's just a mere day. We laugh at Shimbagambuidi. That is a tribalist. We even us here are tribalists. I don't know about Chelston. Some of the churches we come from, another tribe cannot be an elder, like where I used to come from. If you are not Tonga, you can't be an elder. If you are Bemba, you can, the only position you can be head deacon, even if you are very spiritual. Only Tonga have Holy Spirit at my former church. They are the ones who can be elders. I'm talking about those I'm talking. I know what I'm talking about. I don't know here at Chelston. I know of another church somewhere where I come from. If you are Bemba, you're the only ones who can be elders. You know, the problems we have in the political arena, Bembas and Tongas, even in church we have them. Am I lying, church? We have them here. I know even here they are here. Yeah. Tribalism. But you are forgotten. When you are in the nominating committee, you are just choosing people from your own tribe. You took a bath. This is God's church. Bembas and Tongas are brothers and sisters in the Lord. Loses and chewers, every one of us. Our tribe here is a love because God is a love. When the Holy Spirit is in us, we will love anyone, even those that are not lovable, because even God loved us when we were not lovable. Amen, church? Amen. When the Holy Spirit comes in us, He changes us, we become new creatures. When the Holy Spirit comes in us, New management takes over. Everything we do is different because there's new management in our lives. And Jesus tells Nicodemus, as long as you're not born again, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. Nicodemus, you must be born of the water and the spirit. This is 1202. Let me conclude. In short, I'm saying, but your baptism is not enough. You need also the baptism of the Spirit. If you are going to change the world, you need the baptism of the Spirit. When the baptism of the Spirit is in you, it changes the way you do things. There's new management in your life. There's the way you dress as a child of God. You're not dressed like a prostitute at church, a long dress with a slit that ends here. No, you know how to dress as a child of God. No, it's modern. We'll not talk about dressing. This is Charleston. I'm telling you. When the Holy Spirit is in you, you will know how to dress. I know, see, fashion, slim of it, everything is tight, the trousers tight. When you have the Holy Spirit, you know how to dress. You know how to eat. You know how to talk. Hallelujah, church. Amen. Chelston, if we are going to change the world, we need a rebirth. And when we need a rebirth, we need baptism of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord baptize us with the Holy Spirit anew. Amen. Amen.